Welcome back to the Mob Mentality Show. I'm Chris Lucian and my co-host is Austin Chadwick. And today we're going to be talking about uh, the third habit of the uh, seven habits of the highly effective mobber. Um, so this is put first things first. Um, and so kind of a lot of things come to mind. But Austin, why don't you kick us off? And and uh, what does habit three mean to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, But before specifically getting into you, uh, mob programming. I have to say that it was funny uh, reading this part of the book because uh, there has been a lot of influential advice given on given to me early in my life, and I think this phrase "first things first was used a couple of times, uh, you know, in, in some books or advice from people, and uh, and it really was a big game changer for me, like in my early college life. And it was so funny to read the book. And I'm like, oh, this is where these people got it from, <laughs> you know. And uh, it, it was really uh, cool to see it cashed out and given more granular detail of uh, what it means. And I think uh, what it what it means is first, based on the principles, kind of we've talked about in the second habit, it, you know, being more principled centered, um, based on your principles, what things are most important, right? And then uh, instead of prioritizing your schedule, uh, I like this quote he had, but to schedule your priorities. So instead of, you know, I think often we have the uh, cart before the horse, so to speak, where people think of prioritization as um, just whatever I already think I need to do, prioritizing those things, as opposed to doing the deeper and harder thing of, okay, what are my principles? Based on those principles, what things are most important? And then schedule your time that way, right? And you're still influenced by all the incoming requests and all those things. Um, but uh, yeah, and uh, it definitely leads to uh, <laughs> what is sometimes called the Eisenhower matrix. And uh, you you brought that up in a recent conversation, Chris. So <laughs> uh, why did that stand out to you uh, from this chapter? Yeah, uh, I, he actually, um, in the book, he kind of talks about the uh, urgent and, and important. So the Eisenhower matrix, for those that are, aren't familiar, is, uh, you know, um, the horizontals are on, a, on this matrix are important and not important. And then the verticals are urgent and not urgent. And uh, and so he kind of goes on to say that, you know, everything's in in the first quadrant, which is important and urgent. Right. And so these might be like crises, emergency meetings, last minute deadlines, uh, you know, un unforeseen events and, and pressing problems. Right. And then uh, you have the, um, you know, and then you also have like quadrant three, which is like distraction, which is urgent, but not important. Right or waste quadrant four, which is this idea of not urgent and not important, but you end up, you know, doing it anyway. Um, uh, and then, you know, it kind of goes on to say that quadrant two is where you want to be, you know, spend most of your time, which is the, the quadrant of effectiveness, which is uh, er important, but not urgent. Um, and even on like the Franklin Covey website, I'm looking at the matrix there right now. And, um, it's interesting because the, uh, you know, they list recreation, learning and renewal, relationship building, um, you know, as well as proactive work, important goals, creative thinking and um, planning and prevention. So like there, there's a lot in there that I think is really important, um, you know, so learning and renewal. Uh, so I, I think that manifests as kind of lightning talks and other things like that, uh, learning sessions. Uh, recreation, um, you know, uh, I think that might manifest as uh, cross team lean coffees or, you know, back in the early days of mobbing, we were hiking together all the time. Um, relationship building uh, kind of in the sim similar space as well, you know, you know, and, and those things are in quadrant two, right? Uh, versus, um, you know, things like uh, maybe spending time on social media or, uh, time wasters or gossip or something like that, right? You know, not or even if you're in, in the like not urgent side. So, um, I I I just liked this, uh, you know, kind of the getting it done prioritization thing and and a reminder back to the Eisenhower matrix, um, because uh, yeah, recently I think I, I you know I was both reminded by it from from reading through the book, but 
also, uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking me about prioritization and, and how do you how do you go about, you know, um, doing some of these things. And I think the Eisenhower matrix, even if I didn't remember what it was called, I would often say, well, urgent and important kind of spell out the matrix for them. So I don't know that that that's what comes to mind, really, and, and what, you know, how I've leaned on that over and over again. But uh, yeah, recreation, learning and renewal and relationship building, I think, are in quadrant two and are not often focused uh focused on uh by people but but also you know quite important right yeah absolutely absolutely and um yeah and i th and i liked uh how he how he walked through um the different quadrants what happens when you focus too much on them because i mean in reality we all do all things from these quadrants but what's your focus what's kind of your uh north star so to speak uh, going back to you uh, the previous habit and so if you make uh, quadrant one which is the urgent and important your your north star and i think um i think this one might be the most challenging because they're both right it's urgent and important um and so it's almost like why wouldn't i spend all my time here um but i think uh the the thing he points to is that if all your focus is on quadrant one, it'll get bigger and bigger until that's all you do. <laughs> and I don't think uh, us humans handle that well, always being in crisis, urgent mode. <laughs> it's yeah. not healthy for one. And two, um, I think it, it might just be my personal opinion that I have reasons for. Um, and I mean, he says it leads to burnout too, because I think that, yeah, that's the thing we can't handle it. But uh, I have reasons for it. But I also think um, a lot of things that present themselves as urgent, important, they're important, but they're not the most important. Um, and so that kind of comes back to putting first things first. And, you know, it's funny, me and my wife will talk about this all the time. There are a million important things, you know, that, uh, you know, uh, any one person has something important in their mind and they have a wonderful plan for your life for that important thing. And it is important, you know, but is it the most important? And that's that's a really critical, like priority decisions are so key because just the fact that something's important doesn't mean it it demands your time, right? Because since we're finite, we can only pick a handful of things, right? Very Kanban thinking, right? You can't yeah. do everything. So if there's a million important things, by by the fact that we're finite, you are going to not do, you know, thousands of unimportant things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so uh, it's really important to take time to figure out, okay, what is the, the most important? And I think the urgency can blind you to uh, the importance of it. And so it's almost like you need to start in quadrant two, where you're not in urgency mode to even figure out what is the most important <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to begin with. Because if you don't do that, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say it, it can dominate your life. It's just, uh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know and, and it can also be procrastination too, right? Like you, you spent, or you could pr procrastinate into the next procrastination as well, right? Like the, all of those are are ways to end up in quadrant one. So, so it might be that you just have a lot of urgencies hit you, or it might not. It might be that you, you know, so like in the book, he focused so much on exercise, right, and and just like physical fitness in, in general he's like oh well for 30 minutes a day you know a few days a week you you can you know make sure that you're not going to have like tons of uh you know urgent uh, urgent and important cardiovascular issues or something like that so like yeah. that was like and that that reminded me you know bringing it back to mobbing it's like you know, you know, for for uh, 30 minutes of refactoring time, each time you complete a task, you can avoid hours and hours of, like, you know, heavy debugging or or uh, code reading sessions. Um, so, you know, it, it I think that was uh, like a big um, thing to highlight there. Yeah, definitely. And in it, in it, it the uh, correlation occurred in my mind right now, and it did when I was reading it as well, is. Uh, Arlo Belshi's uh, Bug Zero talks. Yeah. Uh, one of them, he talks about fires. And that was like the analogy through the whole talk and how fires are so exciting, you know, and like it creates a sense of urgency and you have to put it out. And he was saying that he feels like the software industry is addicted to the fires of bugs where, mm -hmm. 
you know, if you set up a system where you're generating lots of bugs, you have an endless list of important and urgent things, right? <laughs> and job security. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, you can, you know, it's probably where the, you know, in many ways where the term firefighting comes from, right? You can just be putting out fires all day and never put in time to figure out how to prevent fires, right? Yep. Um, and, and, and that could have been feature work, right? Like that could have been yep. a mm -hmm. benefit to end customers and profit for the company. But instead, that time is all waste, right? Yes, yes. So you can be an incredible firefighter. Or if you put first things first, you can figure out so that the crisis and the the fires don't happen in the first place, right? And that might mean you're you're neglecting the important and urgent thing for a little bit because you need to go, you know, uh, set up your house so it's not so dangerous <laughs> for a fire to occur. Um, and uh, it, it's really counterintuitive. And I think it's tough because culture plays a lot into this. Uh, you know, I've been in company cultures where it's almost like the week to week, quarter to quarter numbers dominate. And that can be really problematic because short-term wins and long-term losses, you know, uh, might be happening over and over again with that, that type of thinking. Um, and so, again, it goes back to principles. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then uh, maybe to shift gears a little bit, um, let's see, quadrant three. Oh, urgent and not important. <laughs> Have you ever seen that go south for you or a team? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, 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 well, I think of this as like, hey, you know, when I when I tell people the best programmers I know are people that are proactively lazy, right? And so uh, that's that's specifically talking about quadrant three. It's the the amount of time that you might spend automating something that you have to do over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that um, if you if you have a proactively lazy person, then they are automating, they're abstracting, they're, they're spending a lot of time in quadrant two, uh, so that, you know, when the difficult change comes, it's either easy to refactor or it's easy to change right off the bat. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, this might be, um, you know, build automation for one, right? Like going through a build process and it works on my machine and going back and forth with somebody versus like having a pipeline that runs on a new machine every single time. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, we end up, you know, saying like, oh yeah, let's take all these different priorities and tasks and, and just get them done. But, but really they were not, you know, they didn't need to exist, uh, or they needed to be done, but you know maybe we could have done some quadrant two work to eliminate the quadrant three work. Um, so I do think that uh, you know often, and I think also interruptions are in that category too of like, you know, oh, can you take a look at this for me for a second? Um, and I think mobs are inherently resilient to that because people walk, you know, oh, uh, in the day of walking up to people and mobbing. Uh, you'd say, oh, those people are in a meeting and then walk away, right? You know, rather, uh, and maybe send them an email or something like that. And so, um, and actually recently I was talking to a product owner and they're like, oh, I have this thing. And, and, uh, and it was, you know, it was like kind of like a, um, maybe a customer complaint about something. And it was, uh, it was like definitely something that the team should look at. Like, like it was, um, but it, it wasn't super important in the context and, and it, you know, at the time and it, you know, like it was just something that should have been looked at much later, but it was delivered to the team in a, in a channel that like gets looked at often. So I was like, okay, well, you know, we try to look at email less frequently than chat. We try to look at, uh, or we try to engage with people in the mob, uh, more frequently than chat. And so if it's, if it's urgent and if it's quadrant one, jump in to the mob. If it's quadrant two, uh, send it over, um, in the chat, put it on the Kanban. Uh, if it's, you know, and if it's quadrant, quadrant three, like maybe email it. <laughs> and then if it's quadrant four, just delete it or put it in a nice to have area. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so that, like that, that's what quadrant three means. Like, so being being conscious of the things that don't need to be done. And if it's important, but have to do it often, 
Um, often that's listed as delegated in the Eisenhower matrix examples out there. Uh, but I, I often think of it also as automated, you know, um, and yeah. I, you know, today with, uh, language models that might be easier than ever. <laughs> that's right. It'll give you the code on how to automate it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I think, um, identifying, uh, quadrant three, which is again, the urgent, but not important is, you know, I think maybe there needs to be a mob role for it, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in addition to being the nose, uh, this is one I like the hat I like to put on quite a bit is, uh, talking with and working through with the team, uh, why they're working on it. Right. And often it's because of the urgency. Right. And, uh, uh, the the phrase that comes to mind, and it's it's like a saying in pop culture, but it's like, your lack of planning is not an emergency for me. And yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so some things will come through the pipe with extreme urgency and do it now, or yeah. we need this by this. And, and it's very easy to find yourself being pulled into that because you want to be helpful. You know, you want to be, you want to be a kind person, you want to be a nice person. But uh, kind of turning to the radical candor model, I think if you respond to, quote unquote, nicely to uh, urgent but not important things, it turns into ruinous empathy because it doesn't help you. It doesn't help them. It doesn't help the company um, follow good principles and lead to better outcomes yep. if you're spending all your time there, right? They might They might feel helped by you, but... Uh, you're not being direct with, you know, the importance of it, right? And so while it might sting to say no, <laughs> but it's, it can be very kind and direct and courteous to do so. And, you know, you can be very direct and more, quote unquote, combative with it, or you can be more kind of like, oh, that's a great request. Uh, you know, we added that, you know, to the queue, you know, uh, yeah. which <laughs> might be, uh, uh, you know, maybe not your your top priority queue or whatever, but, um, you know, we're working on this right now for these reasons, or, you know, we're doing critical work over here and we'll get back to you or something. It's and a respectful, teach... it's a respectful place to put it. Yes. Uh, acknowledging that you may never get to it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, but, but not being like, uh, deceptive about it, but being clear that like, you know, this is what's priority right now. And for this reason, and I think to teach the team that it's not being mean or ungracious to do so. It's actually the opposite. It, it is good. And um, and another thing that came to mind to me about this quadrant was uh, I'm taking a, a leadership class and a lot of it, you know, not surprisingly, um, most of the leadership literature since factory age assumes solo work, right? It's just, mm -hmm. and so uh, like team leadership theory and things like that. Uh, a lot of the theorists in that field, it's a lot about syncing mental models and getting people back in sync on priorities and um, and how a lot of overhead of quote unquote leadership is just getting people in sync <laughs> on yeah. what's first things first. And what I love about mob programming is you are in sync already <laughs> with the team. Yep. And it's it's no mystery to what causes distraction into the into the less important quadrants yeah. and it's easier to see and address and you're speaking from within the system as opposed to hey i meet with you one hour a week and i told you the last 39 hours you spent was a waste you know what i mean like that's going to come across harder than hey i see where uh we spent the last 15 minutes going down this path uh is this really the important thing let's talk about that you know <laughs> like that Absolutely. comes across much more natural. Um, and so I think one thing that's great about mobbing is it it's almost like you turn up the good and that problem fades away where people are out of sync, at least mm -hmm. for an internal mob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, very cool. Uh, yeah. And uh, I guess, you know, one kind of final thought here before we close it out. Uh, the um, I, I, I think that if if you find yourself struggling with this, um, one thing that you can do is just take your to-do column and your Kanban and split it into four columns, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, and organize your tasks that way. And then and then look at the number of tasks in each 
quadrant and and figure out you know okay uh you know what does that look like so so that that could be a strategy for looking at it yep um but yeah uh so you know to kind of close it out uh or anything left before we move, move on no okay close bring it down right. That's good. uh to close it out uh you know please uh like and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you uh maybe maybe somebody out there or a mob you know is struggling with the eisenhower matrix or putting first things first then this episode may be a good one to share with them uh and it might not be urgent but it is important <laughs> uh and uh you know to all of you uh have have a have a good one mob well and uh yeah we'll see you all later bye everybody see you